Hey everyone, welcome to this week's Azure update. It's the 13th of June or Friday the 13th. So just be very careful of anything you do today. Stay away from ladders, etc., etc. As always, we have the chapters. So you can jump to any particular update you care about the most. New videos this week. One of the biggest topics that keeps coming up is entry resiliency. As an organization, I'm using Microsoft Cloud Solutions, uh, SaaS solutions out there from other providers. And the identity is that first entry point. It's required to be able to use all of those solutions. And so its resilience is critical to understand and have trust in, because realistically, this is one of the times where there's very little you can do in terms of adding a backup if Entra had a problem. So what I kind of go through in this video is how it's structured and how Entra itself has a plan A, B, C, D, E to handle different types of failure. So I go through that. So hopefully you can get a better trust that, hey, they're doing a lot of different things to make it truly resilient, even across an entire Azure infrastructure type problem. And I did a quick video on a new type of login you could do for your frontline workers. Now, this is a single factor, pretty simple. I wouldn't use it for uh, information workers, people who are using trusted apps, trusted data, but for like a really basic scenario where I have people that just have to use some kind of shared iOS or Android device, this is a, a simple way to facilitate their login. So on to what's new. On the compute side, so AKS container network logs is now in preview. So this lets me capture the network traffic across my AKS cluster, and then once captured, perform certain analysis on it. So this is part of the advanced container network services functionality. Now it is not capturing the payload of the packets, i.e. the actual data, but it's capturing the metadata. So I can think about the source and destination IP, uh, the pods involved, the service name, the ports, the protocols, the traffic direction, so I get this visibility from layer three, the IP all the way up to layer seven, like the HTTP traffic. I can apply customized filters to control what traffic is captured and stored. So there's a mode in which I go and store the data or I can run it on demand. So I can do a real time visibility without having to have done pre-configuration or capture to any kind of storage. Um, on the SAP HANA for Azure Large Instances, they were originally retiring end of June 2025. Now that has been extended to end of December 2025. So giving you a bit more time to migrate, but what you really wanna do is go ahead and move to those SAP certified regular Azure VM sizes because there are now these massive Azure VM different SKUs available. So you should be able to use them instead of those SAP HANA specialized. So you still wanna um, really prioritize that migration, but you have a little bit more time. Um, the Azure Command Launcher for Java is available in preview. It's actually a private preview. So this is a JVM, a Java Virtual Machine Launcher. So I can use it to configure the resources that those Java applications will use. Now it works across VMs and containers, so AKS, container apps, and many, many more. And one of the big deals is with this, I can define the configuration. So things like the heap size, garbage collection strategies, and much, much more. So by leveraging this, instead of having to use the defaults and potentially have a non-optimized Java runtime, so I'm wasting resources, I can get a much better optimization of the resources that I'm leveraging. And the new LV4 series VMs have gone GA. So these are storage optimized. And they're available in both an Intel and an AMD variant. So remember the AMD variant will have the little LA, so it's an LA. That is also an LAO. So the LAO, it's really focused on uh, more memory and storage per virtual CPU. So the LAO v4 can have between two and 32 virtual CPUs. Then for each virtual CPU, I get eight gigabytes of memory, but 720 gigabytes of local NVMe. The regular LA and the regular L, i.e. Intel, can have between two and 96 virtual CPUs. Now it's still eight gigabytes of memory per virtual CPU, but it's 240 gigabytes of that local NVMe. 
So anywhere where I want a massive amount of local, super fast NVMe storage, these would be a really good solution. So things like a caching layer, um, elastic search implementation, you'll get certain databases that all store it locally and then replicate between them and maybe do some kind of durable storage somewhere else. These would be a really good fit. On the networking side, so again, this is actually a private preview. So you have to go and sign up for this, but I can now have for my Azure front door, so Azure front door remember is that layer seven um, global balancing solution, and then web application firewall can sit in front of that to give me certain protection. So what this lets me now do is profile-based and route-based web application firewall policies. So it's giving me more flexibility about where I apply the policies and it's no longer just on a particular front end or particular custom domain. So I could create and apply a policy for all of the domains on my Azure front door, but also I could create and apply a policy only for a specific route. So maybe it's my payment page, so I have different security requirements, so now I could go and create a policy and apply it just at the route for that particular page. Um, Azure Virtual Network Manager is now available in the China Cloud. So remember, Azure Virtual Network Manager is about that at scale centralized management of things related to your virtual networks. It could be the connectivity between them, and I can do a full mesh, I can do hub capabilities. It uses a special type of connectivity between them, so it's not using regular peering, so I get greater scale. I can create security admin rules that apply before NSGs. I can do routing, IP management, and much, much more. So now, hey, I can go and leverage that in the China Cloud. On the storage side, so the archive tier is now available in Italy North in GA. So the whole point is we have those tiers of storage for Blob. So you have hot, cool, cold. They're all online and I pay differently. The hot, I pay the most for the storage, but I pay the least for the interactions, the transactions. And then it gets cheaper for the storage, but higher for the transaction costs as I go to cool and cold. Well, archive is even cheaper, but it's offline. I have to bring the data back, rehydrate it out of archive into another tier to actually be able to read it. And that can take many hours to do, but it's by far the cheapest option. And it's really good for data that I don't anticipate having to interact with, but I have to keep for a fairly long period of time. Maybe it's a regulatory requirement to keep data for seven years or something. So archives are really cheap way to just retain data that I don't anticipate having to use, but hey, I need it there in case I had to be able to access it. So now I can use that in Italy North. And premium SSD V2 and ultra disk, remember these both support dynamic IOPS and throughput. So I can set the value separate from the capacity, even change them while it's in use. Ultra just has higher limits and a slightly lower um, latency than the premium SSD V2, but they're both sub millisecond. Now I can have cross tenant customer managed key. So the key and the key vault that is being used for the encryption can now be in a subscription that's in a different tenant from the actual disks themselves. And where that's gonna be useful if I have like a, a SaaS solution, if I'm offering a software as a service to different customers, there's gonna be a requirement sometimes where they want to control the key. They want full control of the key that's being used to encrypt their content as part of your SaaS service. So with this cross-tenant CMK, you can now facilitate that. They keep the key in their key vault. And through a series of setup steps and managed identities, you can now give permission so you can encrypt with that. On the database side, so Azure Data Explorer now has persistent graph semantics. So this is enabling me to create a durable graph data structure that is maintained beyond any specific query session. So that's gonna speed up any time I wanna do interactions based on the relationships between the data. So the whole point of graph semantics is it lets you model data based on their interconnections. I have nodes for the different types of entity, like a person or a building or a computer. Then you have edges that form the relationships between those entities. So it's really useful when I have the data, I want to act on it based on the relationships. Hey, the people work for this manager, the people uh, work in this building, they use these devices, et cetera, et cetera. So now I can create those graph semantics, those models, and it's gonna persist 
beyond any particular session. So it's going to be really useful for those types of interactions. Um, the Databricks connector for Power Platform is in preview. Say I'm using Power Apps, and now it's going to be really easy to integrate with my Azure Databricks data. I can access the real-time data and all of the huge data sets you're commonly going to see in Databricks. And then miscellaneous. So Azure Site Recovery now has trusted launch VM support for Linux operating systems. So the whole point of trusted launch is it's for those Gen 2 VMs, which are UEFI instead of BIOS based, because it's UEFI, has a virtual TPM. Virtual TPM lets me do things like secure boot. So there's an attestation from the hardware all the way through to the operating system. So I can be sure there isn't some boot kit or root kit or other bad thing it's been injected between the hardware into the operating system. So now I can protect those using the Azure Site Recovery. And this includes Ubuntu, RHEL, SUSE, Alma Linux, Debian. For some of them, there's particular kernel requirements and the documentation goes through all of that. And that's it. Uh, as always, I hope this was useful. Again, uh, be extra careful today on Friday the 13th. And until next video, take care.